In this video, we're going to take a look at how we go about sketching a mortise and tenon. By the time you're making a mortise and tenon, you would have plenty of practice at sketching other joints. So we're going to have a go at this in an exploded isometric view. So we'll start off as usual by drawing a line of 30 degrees using isometric grip paper. And I'm going to measure out five squares each, so three fives, and then to a depth of three squares. And I complete that rectangular shape using the 30 degrees lines. Come to a depth of five, and I'm going to project the lines around as well too that I have for the middle section of the two of the fives. Extend the lines down below that there from the middle section and just when you're clear of the piece by a couple of squares and uh, make sure that you draw the rectangle and you can see it lining up which is the same as the stock piece five by three. I measure down five for the top section and then eight for the second section and I'll just put the sizes beside them here. So now we have the kind of outline of the two pieces of wood as they would come together. I can go around the outside of the block of wood at the top of the T, which is going to be our mortise. And then I can put in the mortise part here. Then at the bottom piece, which is the tenon, I take the three lines in the middle and I'm going to draw in the section I need. You can see I've rubbed out the facing lines just so that it doesn't take from the overall look of the tenon. And that is all within the five squares at the top. So each of these two pieces now in exploded view looks like that they've been pulled apart and they can actually be slotted back together again. So we have our mortise at the top and our tenon at the bottom. And I'm going to put in the usual uh, bit of end grain to show that it's wood. And I can put in my piece A and B and my face side and face edge. In this case it's only the face side. And I can put in my dimensions now which we'll need to make the piece. So along the top here I'm coming two squares away so that it doesn't clutter the actual drawing. And the same too at the tenon. I can put in my sizes. And I need to put in the sizes for the actual tenon and the mortise, which will be the same. So 44s, 344s along the top, 30 millimeters is the depth of the stock wood, and 44 is the width, 80 and 44, and then we have three tens here, three equal spaces for the mortise and much enough for the tenon as well. In addition to this now, I can go about drawing the setting out of the piece, which is handy for when we come to make the piece. So I'm just going to start by drawing a 30 degree line, a measured depth of 3 and 5, which is the stock in the end, I measured in 1 to allow for piece A, at 3 fives. So 1 is the waist and the 3 fives are parts of piece A, and then I have 3 squares then for where the waist would be, even though we don't measure that in reality. And then 8 and 5, and I can square out the stock and project my lines. Again, as always, do these all at the same time so that you'll be improving as you go along with each of these here and use the stroke of the pencil. The tenon on piece B and then the mortise has to be accommodated in the, the middle section of piece A. As you can see, I went about that wrong on the line there, but fortunately the pencil is quite soft so it's easy enough to rub that out. Don't put anything in heavy until you're, you're certain of it and it'll save you on that kind of trouble of rubbing things out. Again, nice definite lines. We mark in our waist when we have it completed here. And we'll need to mark on piece A and piece B and the sizes we have directly in front of us as well. So that's waist for the mortise. End waist. Don't know what size the piece is in the middle even though I've used that three squares because it's fairly tight on the page to fit it in and waist here and I'll not make this line at the front edge quite as heavy as the rest of them so it takes it wouldn't take I don't want it taken away from the overall look of the drawing and piece A and piece B that's our setting out and the whole purpose again of this is that when we're marking it out in the room we can hold our piece in front of us to that sketch and it should be matching that there because when the pieces will be separated and they're brought together it'll fit perfectly so that's uh, our mortise and tenant. 